Welcome, my name is Dr. Robert King. This is a tutorial for the introduction of Genius. When you first load up Genius, what you'll get is your directory structure on the left pane. Whatever directory you're in, the box here will have those files. And if you select on a file like we have here, you'll see the contents of that file here. But first of all, what you need to do is if you go to Tools and Preferences and then General, you need to check where you're going to keep your data. Now you can keep it on the D drive if you have a lot of room, which is fine. But you can also use a data share that you set up with computing services. And people with a lot of data may want to do this because you can have a lot more space and it's also backed up regularly whereas on the D drive it's if the computer crashes and you know dies you lose all your data so we recommend that a um, if you're using a lot of data go with a, a data share and ask the computer services for that and then you just change the location here in addition to this when you first load up this will say 1000, so it'll only have one gigabyte of RAM, which makes Genius quite slow and fail on a few jobs. Most computers will have at least four, so you can take this up to 3000. If you have eight gig, you can take up to 6000, and so on. But uh, ideally, if you've got eight gigabytes, which is preferable, set this to 6000, and you'll find that less likely that a job will fail because you don't have enough RAM to run it. Okay, so once you've finished all the changes, you press OK, and then you're good to go. And it should say down here, once you restart, how much gigabytes of RAM that you're using. And if you ever see that it's gone very high and um, you're worried that a job may not run, if you click on this, it will collect any garbage that's accumulated in the memory and clear up some room for you. So that's the basic setup of your genius. Uh, what we have here is a number of options for you to play with. The most obvious ones are import from files if you want to import in data. You can drag and drop but import from file also works. And if you want to export, you can export selected document, export folder and then reload it into another Genius instance or just use it as a backup. In edit, a useful feature is the batch rename so when you change the sequence the name here will say modified if you do a batch rename you can remove that modification so we're going to need more options here you have to go into the advanced and do um, brackets modified and then just leave it with blank and press ok and it will replace those uh, name changes in view you can change the view settings if you want in tools there's Blast and there's one or two other tools in here. An important one to look at is plugins. So there's a number of plugins you can install and use. Um, Move is a very good genome alignment tool. It'd be beneficial to, uh, to install that. Phobos is very good for repeat finding. And there's a number of other tools in here that may be useful to you. Um, one additional that I do recommend is Interpro Scan for looking for protein domains. Um, also, got Last is a very good alignment program as well. So there's a number of tools there to play around with. Okay, so in the sequences section, you can reverse complement, translate, do other things. Annotate, because I've installed the Augustus gene predictor, I could annotate a sequence using Augustus, which is a multi-exon gene predictor. And there's a number of, number of uh, short links here for tools and so forth. So that's basically what Genius has. Um, we also have Decipher. Um, there's a web page. If you go onto the internet, it will show you how to install Decipher into uh, Genius, so you can use that from the Genius client as well. That's a good thing to do. But let's just look at some of the basic um, functionality and descriptions. So 
we've got six sequences in here these are DNA sequences so we can zoom in zoom out to look at our sequences what you'll have is on the central pane the home screen you have a couple of different op options you can use complement or translation so I click translation if we zoom in it will show you the translation of the sequence within that reading frame um, you can change the reading frame here so let's do frame 2 and so forth if you're interested an interesting um, option is the show GC80 graphs this is quite good for when you're looking at assemblies or just helpful for you looking at sequences because you start to know the pattern of your GC80 content of your sequence and you know what to look for like if I was doing a genome assembly you might find there's a very AT rich region at the end which aren't assembled because of the repetitive nature of those regions there's also find ORFs if you want to look for ORFs that will do as well so these are all cDNA so hopefully it should go from start to end so that's the basic um, information grid on the right here we can get rid of this just by clicking this button here and again out again in again this is also a, uh, a useful button because you can only look at one file in this pane at any one time so if you use this button here to pop out this pane then you can look at two different files at once and you don't have to wait if it's a particularly big file for it to load because you have them both loaded already this is much more efficient than going from one file to another one file to another and waiting for it to load especially if they're big um, so these buttons along here you can extract a sequence by clicking extract and this will extract it to another file you can reverse complement a sequence, highlight and then just reverse complement that sequence or the whole sequence. You can translate these sequences to proteins. You can allow editing and then change the sequence yourself. You can highlight add annotations. So if you wanted to add a cDNA or a gene annotation, you can do so. Or if you wanted to run some of the alignment or mapping tools. So if you go to align and assemble, you can align the multiple sequences all against each other you can map to a reference if you have something you want to map to you can de novo assemble these or map primers so if we just look at aligning sequences just an example so a box will come up for each job you try and do and then you just have to select the parameters so we're just doing a alignment job we've selected the program we want to use click OK and then it will do the alignment and then what we have is the alignment and what you'll see is those differences are highlighted and you can change that in this right hand panel and then look at those sequences a bit in a bit more detail so this is basically the basic use of genius um, anything more that you'd like to know um, you can really contact support so here you can ask any specific questions or if you think there's a bug in the software because this software periodically updated every month then you fill in your details send off the message a snapshot of your screen is also helpful and then they'll get back to you this is a service we pay for so we do recommend that you, you please use the support before you contact us because they are more likely to, to have the solution to your problem